All right. Hey, guys. Welcome to another edition of Run Buck on Games. I'm Run Buck, and I figured we could go back in time and do another format of a Clan War Tactics video. Because we've been seeing a lot of this attack at Town Hall 9, and I thought it was unique in that it was enabled an entry-level Town Hall 9 really to contribute in Clan Wars. And, of course, it's that wonderful name, Hejibo, or HGHB, I think they call it. But uh, in in my terms, it would be Heji Bo, period. That's it. Healers following the giants with the bowlers tracking behind. But the mix would look like uh, basically this: twelve giants, four healers, eight wizards, fourteen hogs that come in on the backside, with a minion then for cleanup, and of course the five bowlers in the CC powering it through. That said, let's take a look at a few attacks. I think I got four or five of them, and I'll walk you through the core tactic steps and deployment and what to be thinking about in the usual breakdown way, and we'll see what we learn. All right, let's get to it. Okay, guys, so here are five attacks. Let me pause this first one, and we'll do the usual style of talking in the first base that we look at. Uh, the first three are successful, and then the last two are fails to kind of give you a balance for what's working and what doesn't work. But let's first talk about the, what is a, what does the best ideal profile of a base look like? Uh, you want to see first a pathing that allows you to get your heat, your giants into the base and successfully onto the first AD quickly. What you do not want to have happen is, and it's more so not so much about the giants and their path to the AD, but rather think of anywhere the giants might stall out, like here or here as they try to bang through a wall. And let's say they had switched and this was actually the AD here. Then if this AD can reach where the healers would be, so you kind of got to visualize in your head where the healers are positioned and how does that fit versus where the range of that enemy is, then that's a problem. You know, that that then makes the base begin to become not friendly to the Hiji Boho. Um, but, you know... Yeah, so that would be the first thing. And then the other thing you want to kind of look for is, you know, ideal bases kind of have a dead zone or non-targeted for giant zone in the middle because it allows you to really segment the base into what I like to call three three tiers. And the ideal flow, in my opinion, for the Hiji Bo is, uh, Hiji Boho is to actually kind of walk one tier. So it could be that way, or you could do it this way and walk this direction. But one way or the other, you know, you'll typically see the flow pattern of a successful EGB Boho um, kind of driving the giant walk with the bowlers behind to about the end of the first tier, at which point the, the, that remaining force begins to turn in and, and fight, and that's when you reduce pressure with the hog movement on a surgical type, meaning off of distract type behavior, right? So that's what you're kind of looking for in the base is nice pathing for the giants. So really think about how the giants enter the base, what they'll be working for. Like from there, where's he going? He's probably going to go here. So that's the wall he's going to bang on. So if this was an AD, that would be a horrible um, base style to use for HGB wall. Ho. Um, HGHB, as other people call it. So let's now, uh, let's go ahead and play this one through. If I can hit the right play button. And you can kind of take a look at it. The other thing is, so now that we're moving in the next step, is usually the cuts. Make sure you're using a, not all of your wizards of eight. I think you use about six on the cuts, but you got to make sure. Here, let me pause again. Got to make sure that the cuts are in place such that when you do the third stage, which is the uh, basically the rage rush where your units, giants, then the royals, then a couple wizards, and then the bowlers all push through that point. And so notice how the cuts were done pretty well all the way out to here in this case. And so when the bowlers were dropped here, you know, there's really not much to see. But you don't want to wait too long because if you wait too long, then that first group will clear all the way to here. And at that point, you might be at risk of something like this pulling them out. So there's a very quick deployment of when the wall is going to be breached that not only are your giants in that hole, like it'd be, you'd be like giants, royals, wizards bowlers. I mean, it's a very quick deployment of those three elements moving through because you want them all locking to whatever's in the in the core there defensively before it goes down because you want them to flow into the point. So at this point, uh, everybody's in and we're under rage. The other thing to notice, uh, talk about spell deployment a little bit, is when you're 
When you're dealing with this deployment, you want the rages to touch or enable to basically be touching the giants when they're touching the walls that they're attacking on the next end. So this is the first end. So anytime you drop a, ra a rage, make sure that they are planted more for getting to the walls themselves and enabling the giants to power through the walls than it is about the, the healers themselves. Because really the path of the giants is what protects the healers um, in, in really getting them moving quickly. Uh, and then over time, the healers will actually then move through the rage position anyway. So the giants will have enough time and will survive uh, as they do it. So let's go ahead and keep going. So you see they actually went the other way. So they moved through. And now they're going to do that flow that I talked about going this way. Now here, you just saw another notable point, which is when the Hound has a CC or the CC in general, you want to engage it such that the Queen, which is right here, is involved. And if there's any wizards still around, that they can handle this. Because these hound pups that pop can really tear down your bowlers, even with healer support especially when the healer support's being buffeted by uh, an air sweeper. In this case, this one's pointed this way. I think that one's been taken down. But taking down the AD and the air sweeper before you get to the CC itself, if that air sweeper's going to be pushing your healers, is a great idea because you really don't want to have the healer flow disrupted when the CC engages and, and really drops its horsepower. So in the Hound case, it's a little delayed. But like if it came out Valks, you'd be a little bit worried. So let's keep going again. So there we go. Now we're turning kind of in. So at this point, we kind of didn't really make the turn all the way, but see how this is just one unit. So you'd want to start using your hog distracts to kind of clean that up and then begin to turn. Clearly, your guys are going to be working from this position, so you're going to try to turn and protect the one remaining healer you have uh, off that play. And it looks like the queen's taking care of it for him anyway. She's right there. And then here come the hogs to handle this side of the flank. So it's really kind of on the fly. You have to read the movement. The ideal movement would have been to go a little deeper and then turn, but an early turn, then you just kind of got to read what's there and what are the bowlers taking out. Like this is the bowler range. And notice how the healer staying up, all three of them, has really enabled your core units. What is that, like five hogs? or No, no hogs have really died. You got both royals are still up, uh, and it powers through the base. Voila, right? So it looks pretty simple. So let's look at two more. Uh, successful ones and again go through the flow of vector cuts rage ruts hogs and then the spell usage and kind of talk through those points as we go to kind of raise different points so here's another one i can't move this i'm i'm recording over a replay so i can mark it up as it goes but again so i'm trying to get into this ad right and so little slow but notice notice the flow royals wizards bowlers but it was a little risky there, right? Because the Giants got in a little earlier. I could have been a little quicker with that. It was a Bowler CC, so not a huge risk point. And then they flow along the on the on the flows lines that you're worried about. We're really pushing in hard because what I'm worried about is this Expo uh, coming in and messing with my team. So I'm trying to get to the Expo and let the rest of the group handle what they're going to handle. So they take care of that. And then we use the and you'll find that if you keep two. Um, notice these wizards down here. So in reserve, if you keep two wizards in the minion for late stage clean, uh, it really does help a lot. And you got, can't rush it. Notice how I went a little early with those wizards. And then this, I could have had it now. I could have really torn up this side and made it a little, a little bit easier on myself. But it still worked out pretty well. And at the same time showed you a couple different nuances of the attack. So let's go ahead and go. Come on, Queenie. Now one of the one of the more concerning CCs that you almost might want to avoid, I've got a trap Tesla here, is the Valk CC. So three Valks and maybe like a wizard. Because they can deal so much damage to a group, which is what you're gonna have usually on your penetration point with the giant. So if that happens, uh, you better have your rage down and your poison down to slow them down. And hopefully that'll work out for you. But again, notice we're getting early access to the AD. Again, we've got nice compression of the Rage Rush that goes into the first box. Poison's down to slow the defending troops. That was a Valk uh, CC, so that's good. And then we've got the main troops here pushing through against the Queen and trying to get to her while we use the Hogs in kind of a distract mode. So notice that I didn't really spam them out this time. 
but use them more in a hot as it's track mode and then no found the Tesla farm and push a larger mass into the Tesla farm and throw. Right, so really that, that attack line went like planned. So they were moving this way. And then what I did was I brought the hogs up as this attack lines were kind of taking the center. And then they both kind of converged on this last segment. So maybe that maybe to clarify the, the lines of whoops, the lines of attack, if you if you're it seems that they're actually getting more towards midpoint on the tier walk and then it happens, right? They either turn to the mid or they continue on and you have to but basically then you're working the, the tier. You're either working the end of the tier, try to help them if they turn mid, and you're trying to work the two corners so you're not getting flanked, right? You're safe from the other side, or you're gonna be like if they're turning mid, you might actually run along the side. So here are two of the fails. Now notice why this base would be a fail, right? So we've got all these ADs in mid, and they're very difficult to path to without going through a secondary wall. And what that does to you is notice we're get, it's getting shots on my healers, and we lose two healers. And we I hit this base as we try to record this video um, a lot. And the closest I ever got to three-starring this base was probably like 90-some percent uh, in a friendly challenge with the with the real CC, I think. I don't remember what the CC was that came out, but that's as close as we got with it. But the problem with the base is it's it's got reasonable walls. The the core elements that really mess with this type of attack are, are insulated from it. Um, and they just typically typically tend to get separated. So it, it, it's good isolation and compartmentalization of the base. But really what you should have recognized were the ADs internal. If you can't get a nice clean flow where you have a good confidence that I will get that AD down before it touches my healer, uh, you can you can probably not do this base. It would be the, the advice I give you. I did also try, like, you know, some, some people might think, well, let's just penetrate without the healers and use a healer, heal, rut, heal rage right there and forget the hogs and then bring the healers in late. Worked a little better, but not really a lot. So here we go again. So once again, what are we seeing? Second layer ADs, right? With the Expo's internal. Um, and really that's gonna end up being the problem. Cause we're in position, there, there again, it's a bad CC that really is hard for this to deal with. Valks and, and Wizards, right? Now these walls are pretty strong. Now we're dropping the rage spells pretty well, right? Cause they're, we're getting rage support for the Giants as they move through stuff. Uh, what we're trying to do there is we're trying to get to the expo because it was hammering on the Giants. Uh, maybe we didn't need to do that. Maybe we could have held them off a little bit longer. But uh, again, this was another base where we've hit it like 10, 20, tw 10 or 20 times and consistently were stopped uh, by it. Now keep in mind, right, what you're seeing here and this whole point of this attack is baby Town Hall 9s. Under 15, 15 heroes. Under 10, 10 heroes maybe. Um, okay, so that's done, but um, but under 10 10 heroes, you're basically seeing. Let me go back and I can let's see if we can pull up that mix. Let's show me. Well, you can see it right there. So you're seeing like I'm attacking with eight nine heroes and having pretty good success. And so if you get your heroes above 10 10 and then use this correctly, you can hit up against bases that uh, are you know 20 20. Hero bases, 20-25, 25-25. Depends on the layout of the base. If the layout of the base lets you get your healers moving behind your giants and your bowlers stay consistent and consolidated, it'll work out for you. Let me see if there were any other points I wanted to make. Um, Valks, yes, uh, Hound, yes, yep. Nope. Nope. So I think that's everything. I'll write in the comments if there were any other things I forgot about, but feel free to comment yourself if you think there's something I should have pointed out in the comments and uh, I'll update the main description with that. Sound good? All right. Hope it helped guys. Talk to you later. What am I going to do? My clan sucks. Hey, it's JTJ. Uh, I think that's an all out attack. No, no, it's a legendary JTJU. 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 This army. Download Clash of Clans for free. Then subscribe to JTJU and win.